to show you that what's going on right now isn't new. This is actually a protracted, long-range plan to completely eliminate classical performing arts from our public broadcaster, both television and radio. Not just music, baby. I'm talking theater, dance. They, get, they want to get rid of classical performing arts in our public broadcaster, period. They've been working at it a long time. Now, when I was 15 years old, I started to get really excited about 20th century orchestra music. Yeah. Particularly the work of Charles Ives. I was very fascinated by the work of Charles Ives. So, imagine my excitement when I saw that the CBC announced that the CBC Toronto Radio Orchestra was going to put on a festival. What a concert, folks. A festival, three or four concerts of 20th century and contemporary orchestra music. Well, I, went to, I went to every concert. I went to every concert. Now, you might say, how could a 14-year-old kid afford to go to four orchestra concerts? You must be talking about some rich elite or something. Well, you see, no, I came from a working class family. My father was an upholsterer. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. I was the fourth of four sons. At, but the point was that the concerts were free. Yeah, that's right. Free concerts. Yeah. But you had to phone up a special number. When, it, when the concerts were announced, you couldn't just walk up. You had to phone up a special phone number because if you didn't phone up that phone number, well, you phoned the phone number, then you reserved a ticket, and then you were in, and you had to be right on it. The phone number wasn't always the same. They kept changing the number. And if you didn't phone within about 24 hours, you were beat. The concerts were uniformly sold out. 800 people at a place called the Eaton Auditorium. Now, those of you who don't... Yeah. Some of, where Glenn Gould made many of his recordings, where Heifetz played when he came and gave recitals in Toronto. Well, you know, the Eden Auditorium, now that's the Carlu. That's the Carlu, where if you have enough paper, yeah, you can have a wedding or, you know. I got nothing against wedding receptions and stuff like that. Cool. Well, great. Well, that's a very good thing. But that place was all that had concerts there all the time, year round, lots of them. But that's a whole other discussion. I don't think you'd be able to see a free orchestra concert here in Toronto today. My son's 12 years old. If he wants to go and hear free, professionally prepared orchestra music, I don't think there's any place he could go. So let me just flash ahead about 10 years or so. Now I'm a struggling freelancer in Toronto. And there's a show called Two New Hours. Anybody here remember Two New Hours? Well, an organization called New Music Concerts um, commissioned a composer, Morton Feldman, to write a string quartet for the then newly formed Kronos Quartet. And Morton, late in his career, was working with very large pieces of very large scale. So the string quartet was slated to be about three hours long without intermission. Okay, well, how do you get a three-hour string quartet on a show that's called Two New Hours? Well, you go to the... David Yeager goes to the head of then radio music and says, I need an extra hour. And they give it to him. Now, the concert was live to air, which in, the, in those days what it meant was actually the show was broadcast with a 30-minute delay so that if there were any technical problems, they could deal with it and fix it up as they went. Well, about two and a half hours in, they realized they did have a problem. The problem was that the piece was going to be more than three hours. Yeah. So what did David do? He phoned those in whom he was employed, by whom he was employed, and he said, listen, we're going over. And they said, all right, we'll postpone the 11 o'clock news until the piece ends. I don't think you're going to hear any Morton Feldman, late Morton Feldman music on Radio 2 anymore. You're not going to hear the Bassoni Piano Concerto for that matter, because it's a little too long, you know? They don't like composition anymore. They want songs and tunes. If you're not in and out by 10 minutes, they don't want to know about you. You know, 
Well, the list just goes on and on, canceling the young composers competition, the young performers competition, getting rid of two new hours, getting rid of the radio orchestra. There used to be a radio orchestra to every major center in this country. So the question is, the question is, how do these people get away with this? How'd they get away with it? Yeah, well, see, no, but they counted on something. They counted on something. They counted on the public's apathy. Yeah, they counted on our apathy. They counted on us giving up. They counted on us just making a stink, and then when they didn't do anything about it, we just drift off. And, and you know, they've been pretty successful so far. They've been working at this for about 40 years now. Well, this time, this time, we have to prove them wrong. Don't let up. Don't let up. This is not the last demonstration. This is the first demonstration. See, CBC management wants you to think that the power lies in the executive suites up there at the top of the broadcast center. The power is right here in the streets. Because, because this is public radio. Public television. Yeah. It's our tax dollars at work. Yeah. They work for us. If we don't like the job they're doing, we tell them. And if then they don't respond, we keep telling them. We keep telling them we don't like the job they're doing until they do it the way we want them to do it. Don't give up. Don't ever give up on it. Don't ever, ever, ever give up on it. I'd like to invite... <laughs>